Getting a patent on your product gives you the right to stop others from making, using, and selling your invention. But before you can enforce your patent against prospective infringers, you need to give them notice that in fact you have a patent. And this is done one of two ways, either through actual notice, where you knock on their door and hand them a copy of your patent, or more commonly where you write them a letter and tell them that you have a patent, or through constructive notice, where you take your patent number and you mark it on your product. We call this constructive notice patent marking, and we're gonna talk in today's video about how and when to mark your patents. Hi, my name is John Farrell. I'm a Silicon Valley patent attorney. Welcome back to my channel. We've already said that if you want to enforce your patent, you have to provide notice. And the way to provide notice at the earliest possible date is to place your patent number on the product as soon as your patent issues. And that way, as soon as your patent issues, you can begin collecting damages for infringement of your patent in the event that you have to sue for patent infringement. But patent marking has some other benefits from just allowing you to collect damages on infringement. Putting your patent number on your product tells the world that you have something that's unique and special. It also says that your company is innovative, that you're producing new and interesting products. And possibly most importantly, from a commercial standpoint, it chills the marketplace. It lets the, your competitors know that you have patents related to this product. And if they decide to copy your products, they do so at their peril. A product can be marked with the words patent pending as soon as you file a patent application on your invention. And this also includes provisional patent applications. As soon as you send your provisional patent application to the patent office, you are patent pending and you can mark your products and literature patent pending. And I think you get all the benefits that we discussed before, especially chilling the marketplace with respect to potential copiers. But once your patent actually issues, you're gonna to wanna to put the patent number on the product at the earliest possible date so that you can get the benefit of the earliest possible infringement. So how do we mark our product? Well, there's three ways to mark your product with respect to patents. The first way is to mark your product with the word patent or PAT period, P-A-T period plus the patent number. Now, if it's not possible to put the patent number on the product itself, the second way to mark the product is to mark the packaging. So you can put the words patent or pat plus the patent number on the packaging itself where it can be found by the user and by the public. Now, the third method of marking is the same as the first two using the word patent or pat, but instead of including the patent number, you put an internet address where the user or the public can go and find the patent number associated with the product. Now, this is especially useful if there's a list of patents that are associated with the product. And it's also useful because you can modify adding patents or eliminating patents as patents expire during the life of the product or as the product gets revised without actually having to retool the product or in some way change the label on the product itself. Now, marking patent numbers on software can be a little bit of a tricky outlier. There's a couple of ways we can do this. We can mark the patent numbers on the user interface. For example, maybe a splash screen or an intro screen where the user can see the patent numbers. Alternatively, we can include the patent numbers on the software documentation where it might be easily seen by the users. Now we don't see packaging so much anymore as it's associated with software, but in the event there's a DVD or something or some literature associated with the software package, then it would be appropriate to put the patent numbers on that packaging. Now it's very important that when you start marking your products 
with the patent numbers that all of the products be marked. You can't just mark a few and leave a few unmarked. You need to mark all the products. And it always comes up during litigation. I always ask the question dur during discovery. Have all of the products been marked? What percentage, if any, of the products have not been marked? And it's very important in order to collect damages that all or substantially all of the products contain the patent number. Now, since maintaining marking on your products is so important, I think it's good practice to assign someone in your company with responsibility of marking and tracking proper marking of the products. Now, this may be the packaging department. It may be your legal department. If you're a small company or a solo inventor, talk to your patent attorney about helping you monitor and maintain a marking program. But it's very important that as new patents are issued, that those patents be included in the marking program. And as patents expire, that those patents be removed from the product marking. And the main thing to remember is that if you don't mark your products with your patent number, it's not going to be possible to collect damages for infringed products through constructive notice. Just a word here about patent mismarking. It is illegal to intentionally mismark your product with patent numbers that you don't own or don't have or patent applications that you haven't filed. It's also important to remove expired patent numbers from your products once your patents no longer apply. I made a video a while back titled, Is There Really a Poor Man's Patent? And I received a message from one of the viewers who wrote me and said, John, I am so poor, I can't even afford a poor man's patent. Is it possible for me just to mark patent pending on my product and forego the actual filing of a provisional patent application? And I wrote back, the answer is no. You can't mark patent pending on a product where you haven't filed a patent application. And likewise, you can't put patent numbers on products for patents that you don't own. If your patent's expired, again, you need to remove those numbers from the product. And although it's rare, the government can fine you for mismarking your products with patent numbers. But more importantly, if you ever have to litigate infringement of your product in court at some point in the future, it's really a bad look when you've mismarked patent numbers on your product. Okay, some takeaways from this video on patent marking. First of all, it's very important to mark patent numbers on your products, not just to give notice to potential infringers and to start the clock running for damages, but also for some really valuable commercial reasons, including chilling the marketplace against potential copiers. We said that the patent numbers need to be placed on the product itself or if that's not appropriate, then placing the patent numbers on the product packaging. You should assign someone in your company to keep track of labeling and marking of your patent numbers on your product. And if your company is too small or you're not able to do that, talk to your patent attorney about helping you track in the marking and labeling of your products. Finally, make sure that your patent marking is accurate that you have the right patent numbers on the right products, and that you add patent numbers as new patents issue and you remove patent numbers as your patents expire or your product changes. Okay, that's all I have to say today about patent marking. If you have questions about patent marking, put them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you on the next video.